Tilla, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, just a little warning screen. Probably won't need it, but we know we always put it just in case, man. Uh, Twitch.com is where you can catch any of the live stream. Previous live streams will be ready for the future live streams. You get me? Uh, what else, man? We got Patreon where we post five days per week. Um, watching Game of Thrones right now, man. It's pretty intense. We really like it, man. The link to all of that is down in the description below, man. Let's get into this, man. This is Black Man, the Traveler. I ain't watched him in a, like since 2023. But, you know, he got this video from two years ago. Welcome to the most dangerous place in London. And I'm going to check it out, man. Because it's been in my watch later almost for a year. I'm not going to lie. So today's the day. Uh, let's get into it. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. So New right end. now guys, we're in, we're in Alma Street, yeah, we're in, we're in Maryland. Uh, this area is known for a lot of negative stuff and positive stuff at the same time. So I'm going to show you guys around my neighbourhood and this is exactly where I grew up and this is exactly where um, I was hanging around when, when I was a child. Right guys, so this shop over here, yeah, Alma Convenience Store, is the only store in the neighbourhood, yeah. So literally, this shop has been here for many, many years. Like when we was young, we used to come here, we used to buy like sweets, we used, to, we used to buy a lot of stuff in the shop over here. It's got a lot of history. Everyone, everyone, everyone that's born in Newham has probably been to the shop over here or anyone that's from Stratford, Maryland sides, know about the shop over here, yeah. Alma, off-license convenience, bro. So yeah, man, so basically back in the day over here, there used to be so many of us that used to hang around here. You know, about 30, 40 men, obviously, we used to hang around outside certain people's houses. But when you're young, you're, 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 you're naive and your brain's not even your brain's not even developed at that moment. So you start to hang around with certain people and you started to get into trouble. But then gradually once you grow, you start to understand life in a different way. So I'm gonna show around the neighborhood so you guys can understand. Yeah, so um so as I said that this is this is Maryland. Some people classify it as Stratford, some people don't classify it as Stratford. So we share the same postcode, but obviously certain people are called together. Right. So this neighborhood is famous because you got people Ganged, like Ten for Two that's from here. Um, you got a guy called Chronic as well, big up Chronic from Slewham, he's from here as well. And yeah man, so like this is the birthplace. Yeah, so this is the birthplace of Slewham. Um, big up Slewham. So when I was young, I used to listen to Slewham. So Chronic, you know. Um, I don't know who you're talking Tempe about. Ten for and that. These are the rappers so this from is there. So the, this is basically where Slewham, the, the birth came from and also um, the birth Slewham came from Forest Gate as well. So we're going to walk down here and I'm going to show you the road where I skipped death. Right, brothers, I'm, I'm here with my cousin. I'm going to let him introduce himself. What's your name, bro? My name's King Kaya. I'm Black Man of Travel's first cousin and manager. Yeah. And today we're going to have a great experience in regards to how we grew up in Newham. Yeah. Funnily enough, uh, we went to school together. Yeah. We spent our formative years together. We then went on to the world of work and we've even traveled together to numerous countries. So That's yeah, it's up. a personal trip here, literally. Right, bro, so basically, uh, you're born and raised in Newham? That's right, yeah, born and raised in Newham, Newham General to be precise. Uh, yeah, man, in regards to Newham, how can I say it's quite, uh, very diverse, yeah. it's authentic, and um, it's real, to, to say the least. This y'all mall? I've seen some other few people do videos over here. This the mall, this, this mall is elite looking. <laughs> um, yeah. How would you describe um, Newham as a whole? I, I, in regards to Newham, there's very talented people, but it's deprived as well in regards to if you don't have your head focused or screwed on, people will drag you towards situations you didn't think you'd get yourself involved in. Um, 
and you just got to have your wits about you. There's a lot of dark personalities, so in regards to that, you need to know how to um, manage the different personalities you come across in Newham because um, Newham is a survival of the fittest sort of thing. Yeah, but yeah. a lot of talented people have come from Newham. A lot of people have persevered and elevated themselves from Newham. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great place, very diverse, and uh, it, it's made me the man I am today. Yeah. So. When you was young, what's been the highlight of growing up in Newham? Like, what would you say that's been your highlight so far? I'd say, oh, we used to play football in West Ham Park a lot. So from year <laughs> seven, you know what I mean? Uh, we went to Forest Gate Community School. So um, yeah. that was an eye opener in itself in regards to um, everyone just mixing and getting to know each other. And I'd say generally the highlight was playing football, getting to know my peers. Um, and also fun, fun fact is um, I've got friends for life who I grew up with in Newham in regards to going to school, to them, going to school with them. And what yeah. was it now what 15 years on we've yeah. gradually left school and um you know what's crazy i got friends for life too where i originally grew up from not um yeah from from like when i moved to the suburbs as well uh but none of them like they, they didn't stick around but like i got real friends from where i really am from you know what i'm saying which them childhood friends they they didn't they never forgot me they came, they even was like, oh yeah, when I got older and I didn't remember them, they remember me. I was like, that's salutable, man. Now we locked in for life. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> We're still in contact with the same sort of people we grew up with, so yeah. it, it's like a family element. So yeah, new has been a, how can I say, new has been a, a test, shall we say, and a um, great place to grow up. But I wouldn't raise my kids here. <laughs> you wouldn't raise your kids here? No, not at all. What you see with new at the moment is, um. Newham has completely changed in regards to, it's, 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 it's this divided in regards to um, how you've got the Westfield side, so you've got the ultra rich, and then if you go towards the other side of Stratford, you see the deprivation, and um, they haven't really addressed that issue. Unfortunately, I've lived here for 20 plus years, and it, I wouldn't say the dep dep deprivation's got a lot worse, but it's more visible. I'm seeing a lot more people sleeping homeless outside of the stations. We weren't seeing that about 10 years ago. Um, We've seen a lot more food banks being run. So uh, Newham Council and the government as a whole really do need to address these social inequalities that's happening in Newham at the moment. But all in all, great city and um, yeah, there's, there's a great talent from here. Would you say that there's, um, in the last 10 years, would you say Newham has changed for positive or would you say that it's going back to its dark days? I'd say it's changed for the positive reason being is we've got the largest shopping centre in Europe here in Westfield, as you can see. Um, yeah, about nice. 12 years ago, this was all wasteland, brown belt land. There wasn't anything going on around here. Um, I, you can have a look at Carpenter's estate as well. Prior to um, them building the new Olympic parks, the Olympic Park and the flats, and the, before that it was just marshes, Stratford marshes. So um, we were promised a lot of things growing up in Newham and in regards. But you got to remember also, you got to take into account the reason why these things are here. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't it wasn't for y'all. It was for opportunity to come to that area. It's because they had to clean it up for an opportunity. So the Olympics Which is messed up. I don't think they've delivered. And that's what I'm talking about, the Olympic thing. Like it, it was for all of that. They cleaned up for that. But in regards to changing how people have grown up and how and and how the community they didn't go back and they didn't go back and try to change um the uh the structure of anything you know what i'm saying the foundation that's the word i'm looking for they didn't go back and try to foundationally change anything they just put deodorant on a musty armpit which is this is typical of, of of decrepit places and, and hood politics and things of that nature. Any as a whole is, is better. Oh, my bad. Better itself. There's always been a community element, but it's, it's, it's more separated and divided now, unfortunately. Maybe it's due to the, the times and, uh, yeah, the, the fact that they just keep building and not, like, helping the locals, but it is what it is. Like so I said. you, so now yeah, you're from Newham, yeah, and you said that you wouldn't, you wouldn't raise your children in Newham right now, yeah. Why would you not want to raise your children in a borough that, for the last fifteen years, you've been you've called it home? Why is that, mate? Uh, the houses are too small here, mate. I want a yeah. big garden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want a big garden and an ensuite. Um, no, it's just because I've been born and bred here, and uh, I've lived lived majority of my life here. Um, yeah. it's, it's it's very fast in Europe, and um, 
yeah, I, I wouldn't want my kids to experience how fast Newham is. Mm. I'd rather it be not too far out from Newham, maybe just like further out of Newham, but not in Newham per se. Yeah. That's true, man. I wouldn't raise my kids and my kid in the city. He's making a valid point. It's too fast. You know, when you're in the city or you're in the hood, your kids got to grow up faster. You know what I'm saying? They can't take their time to develop, you know, develop, hit crucial milestones as children. Um, and then we look back and wonder, how, why are you like this? <laughs> well, I didn't have a childhood, really. So that's why at the end of the day. So, yeah, growing, your, getting your kids out of there and elevating yourself to be able to get your kids out of wherever you are. That's the goal at the end of the day. If your kids grow up and they in the hood and they do the same things that you did, you failed. <laughs> My personal opinion. You know, but that's what is success and what does failure look like to all of us. The, the differences, I don't know. To me. So, you're from Newham, yeah? yeah. Now, all the amount of talent stuff that's come out of this borough, would you say that the postcode wars has prevented south side and north side to unify and to network and to grow as one in regards to the postcode war i don't really know the specifics of it but um how can i say it? people have died from um whatever quote unquote south side north side and um i don't know one day hopefully they can be like change and reconciliation and you know what i'm saying people can unite but it, it, as as people are people there's always going to be division people are always going to find reasons to separate themselves so unfortunately it is what it is at, the, at this present time. But yeah, no, big up the Stratford talent, yeah. big up Jay Haas, yeah. Getz, you know, Morrison. Yeah, yeah just to, to name a few. So yeah, there's a lot of talented individuals. Big up yourself, Black Man and Traveller. What you're doing now is very unique and very inspiring. For yeah. someone from our sort of background, working class background to say, listen, look, you're going to have an entrepreneurial mindset whereby you're going to travel the globe and see how people are living and document it from your perspective to then show it to the world is um, revolutionary, man. So yeah, uh, uh, keep persevering on, great talent. Anyone yeah. that's watching this right now, what advice would you give to people that are on the come up, like the YGs, that need inspiration, watching this interview right now in this documentary, what, what, what wise words would you give them? Follow your own paths, because friends will only get you into situations that probably put your head over above water sort of thing. So follow your own path, be your own man or woman, and um, yeah, c continue to dream and persevere on and uh, you know what I mean? Uh, don't, don't take life too seriously, just enjoy it every day as it comes sort of thing, but of course plan for the future. And that's- Yeah, 100%, yeah. chase your dreams, don't worry about what other people got going on. Don't worry about fitting in. At the, at the goal, at the end of the day, you want to stand out, and that standing out is going to separate you from from the pack. You know what I'm saying? So do your thing. Yeah, that's the words of advice I'd give people. Yeah, mind your own business. Well, focus I'm, on what you need to do and what you need to achieve, and um, yeah, man, everything else will fall into place, sort of thing. You got the little kids walking around in the neighbourhoods. Like half term is finished. Life in Newham, the best way I would describe Newham, Newham is a place where you can either be successful, Newham is a place where either you can actually go to jail or you can be dead. So you've got two ways to describe Newham. You can either describe it as a hellhole or you can describe it as a place to survive for some people. Newham is actually a place where multi-millionaire people actually came from here, a lot of young entrepreneurs. So you've got Jermaine Defoe, you got Temper T, you got Steel Bangles, you got Morrison. So Newham is a place where so much multi-talented people come from here. But the problem with Newham, there's too much gang culture and there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, the younger generation don't have no one to look up to. So where there's no older generation for people to look up to, there's gonna, so people are gonna lead to obviously to gang culture and gang activities. So we're gonna walk around this street over here. And yeah, man, it's a hot day. Lucky that it's quiet, because normally, you're going to get the police driving around. You're going to get some police officers patrolling in the neighbourhood. So we're actually lucky that we don't get none of that on camera right now at the moment. Yeah, so basically, yeah, so this is the road where I skipped death two times, yeah? So literally, I'm walking over here with a pet. I'll tell you the, uh, the second incident. So I'm walking over here with two pedal. Before you get into it, buddy. bikes and I've got one of the older guys pedal bikes and I've dropped it to my boy's house so I'm coming through this way 
And then I see people parking outside some of it here in a Ford Focus, in the black Ford Focus. So I've seen the two guys in the car and um, literally they were like, oh, um, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm not responding to them because straight away I can tell that they're not from here. So I was just ignoring them and they were like, where are you from? I'm like, I'm, I'm from around here. But I didn't see the guy that's in the passenger and I didn't see the people in the back. So I just see, I was talking to the guy that was driving because the, the window was tinted. So literally when I realised that, oh, they're not from here, I've, I've literally spun around. I've run towards, um, so I'm running towards this direction. And then one of the guys chased me, then he had, the, he had a little handgun, then he dropped the gun on the floor. So when I'm running towards this way, my boy's mum saw me. She was like, Amir, 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 are you okay? I'm like, run, 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 the guy's got a gun. So literally, they're chasing me over here with the gun. They wasn't shooting it, thank God. But obviously, um, that was the second incident that I skipped death. So I'm going to walk further down over here and I'll show you where the first incident happened. Yeah, so basically here, it's the first time where um, I saw a gun getting pulled out towards me. So we walk in on the street and my boy lives on this block over here. I'm not going to show you the door number, but he lives on this block over here. So gradually, I'm inside my boy's house and then um, everyone just chilling, just enjoying like a normal day in the summertime in Newham. And then there's two guys approach my boy's house in the front gate. And they were like, it's a base. I said to my boy, oh, do you know these people? Then he's like, no, I don't know them. I was like, bro, literally, there's two guys outside your house and your mum's down, down the stairs. Um, I think you got to tell her, you know, to lock the door. And obviously he wasn't paying attention, but I realised that the two guys that were outside my boy's house, they went from the neighbourhood and they were looking for someone. So literally what happened is me and two other boys, we jumped to the back, at, at the back of this block. Because you see this block over here, it's council houses. So once you jump over the back, you end up on the street where we came from over here. So we jumped in the back and then we went to call certain people to come out from the neighbourhood just to, you know, just to come out and help us. So the two guys were actually just sitting there over here. What happened is all the older generation, I walked down. So what happened is um, the older lot, they came out with, um, with knives and weapons and then they confronted the two guys and then they asked them where you're from. And then um, basically they weren't from here, but they were looking for someone that wasn't from here. So to cut the story short, the two guys, they ran off and then everyone dispersed. So nothing happened to them. So gradually, whilst I'm walking down this street over here, on the same street, once I'm walking down this street over here, a Range Rover must have pulled up further down that road. So when I saw the Range Rover, I'm thinking, hmm? Because no one drives Range Rovers in the neighbourhood. Hmm? So when the Range Rover must have pulled up over there, I said to my boy, I think those are the two guys that we confronted. My boy was like, no, 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 it's not them, it's not them. But with me, I'm very street smart. I had to be, I had to be, you know, on point. So after that, the Range Rover must have spanned, came back on the street, and then he stopped right over here with his Ford is parked. So he stopped right over here. So when the Range Rover stopped, the window went low and, and the guy's like, why go on? I'm like, who's that? So I've approached the car, tinted windows, the window went low, and then all I see is black leather gloves. I've gone towards the car now, then I just see the shotgun must have come out like this. So when I saw the shotgun, I was just a bit skeptical. I like literally, my body froze, I was nervous, I was scared. And then yeah, man, so basically, um, I was nervous, I was scared. Come through, bro. <laughs> yeah, so basically I was nervous, I was scared. And then um, I ran towards this direction. I ran towards this direction, but I remember when I was a kid. I remember when I was a kid, I watched Boys in the Hood when Ricky got shot by a shotgun. So I remember, so what happened is I turned the other way. So I ran back this direction, you're right. So I ran, I ran towards this direction and literally the car just chased us around the neighborhood, all the way around the neighborhood. In the Range Rover, they were chasing, they were bussing, they were bussing, then they missed. So that made me, when I had that situation, that made me want to change my life. And obviously to come out, of, you know, not, I wouldn't say gang culture, but just to come out of chilling with certain people that has nothing that's going to benefit me as a person. So I've showed you around the neighbourhood in Maryland and in, in, um, in Almond Street. See what I'm saying? I told y'all this. You don't have to be in a gang to be in a gang. Whoever you chill around with on a daily basis, whatever their affiliation is, you're, you're affiliated. You're a gang member to your ops, <laughs> to their ops. If I see, if, if they see you with their ops, you are an op. And he noticed that at an early age. He said, nah, I can't hang with y'all. And it's hard as a kid to tell some other kids you can't hang with them. I already know, but 
He clocked it and made the change, huh? So basically, this is it, man. So this is home. This is this is this is where I grew up when I was a child. I've showed you around the park, around the shop. Um, I'm gonna show you around the high street, so you look and understand, you know, where we get our groceries from. And obviously, the barber shop where I used to cut my hair, man. So yeah, man, we're gonna go over there. Right, guys, I'm here in Stratford, in Newham, and I'm going to ask this beautiful young lady some some questions. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Fizz. Okay. Yes. And uh, we've met before anyway. We have. So can you, can you please tell the audience uh, about yourself? So um, I actually was born and raised in Newham. I grew okay. up around here in Stratford. Okay. Um, literally lived my whole life here. I'm still in Newham. Okay. I um, don't know what else I can tell you. I, we, I do a podcast. I co-host a podcast with a couple of friends called Grown Up British. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's, that's me in a nutshell. Newham, it's a place that has a lot of negative stigma. It's a place that has a lot of positive stigma as well. So you as a, as a person of colour, yeah. growing up in Newham, how would you describe uh, Newham as your childhood memories? So uh, the area of Newham that I grew up in had a really lovely community feeling when I was growing up. Um, the families that were living on the same road as me, we all, obviously we all grew up together. We still all see each other. We all still see each other around. And I think that's been such a lovely lasting legacy of old school Newham, but it's definitely changed. Um, growing up, I, like you, had exposure to people from so many different nationalities and backgrounds and I absolutely loved it. Like the schools that I went to, got to see and meet and be friends with people from all around the world. And it was amazing to grow up with that. And I think I would have hated living in other parts of London where it's predominantly like one type over the other. And I really do appreciate having grown up in Newham. No, nah, no cap. I look for, I look for diversity as well. Um, it's important to grow up diverse, man. Like me, I grew up on the north side of Chicago, so the, the, the north side is more diverse than any other side. If y'all don't know, Chicago is pretty segregated. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's I could I could go deep into it, but I'm not gonna go deep into it. I grew up on the north side of Chicago, where it's a little bit of mix of everything. So I'm used to seeing. As a child, once I became an adult, I was used to seeing all type of cultures, you know, coming from south, east, or slightly west I, th I feel like the west side is kind of diverse too but coming from the south or, or or the east side you know you only see one person you only see what you see you know what i'm saying and, and it, it takes for you to grow up and to venture out to have that realization like oh there's other people in the world let me adapt let me see what's going on but yeah i need diversity is important because um, I think I've just got a different perspective on life and that's purely because of what I got from other people um, but seeing Newham change over the years has been sometimes quite difficult um, I grew up in what's called the old part of Stratford um, and although this new part is amazing because what used to be here was literally nothing yeah. it's come with its challenges which I always saw it as they've invested loads into the new part, but they haven't invested into the existing communities, into the into what's already there, into what's already established. And you can definitely see a big divide. Literally, when you look across the road there to here, you see the divide. And it, it's quite saddening for hey, someone who's Let me see. grown up, like born, raised, grow, grown up in Newham to see that one part's been neglected over the other. It's It's been a little bit heartbreaking. I think... Um Newham itself, as a borough, has got a lot of negative things. But the thing about Newham, what people need to understand is, so much talent is in this borough. For, I'm going to give you, for example, Still Bangles, um, Morrison, you know, you've got Jermaine Defoe, you've got Jay Huss, you've got Coach of Funds, Young Bane. There's so many talented people that come from here and people don't understand that Newham plays a key part, especially in the teenager's lifestyle and especially in the entertainment industry. So for you as growing up in Newham, do you think Newham has made you the person for who you are now? Of course. A hundred percent. I think definitely. It's, 
it's the experiences, the lived experiences growing up here. Yeah. It's the people I've come across yeah. while here. It's not all been pleasant experiences by any, but it's not always been 100% great experiences. There's been some really, really horrible things that I've seen, things that I've experienced just by living in Newham. Yeah. But it has definitely shaped me for who I am. And like I said, had I been living somewhere else or raised somewhere else, I don't think I'd be who I am today. I don't yeah. think I would appreciate differences in people the same way now um and it's it's always really heartwarming to see when people have come out of newham and done something truly truly amazing whether it's, it's in entertainment or sports or in other other industries and i really want to see more of that come out i just really want to see like the homegrown talent come through from newham yeah 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 big up yourself um i appreciate for actually coming down and it's so strange because 10 years ago or actually 12 years ago we never had this yeah we didn't have this this was a wasteland yeah what people need to understand and one thing I find a bit interesting when people come to Stratford they think about Westfield yeah. they think about West Ham Olympic Park you know they think about the the E20 but if you if you look across the road and you see Stratford Centre this is the bread and butter of Newham the people that actually work in the markets when you go to Upton Park uh, Market, Queen's Market, people that work in the fish... Oh, he doesn't have a cameraman. That's on a tripod. I'm wondering. Like. Fish market, people that work in Green Street. Yeah. That's different elements of Newham. Yeah. Newham is not just E20. It's not just Westfield. Newham, it's, it's got its own identity. It's got its own community. So do you think gentrification has played a key part in changing Newham? Uh, do you think... It always does. Once they figure out there's untapped land and more, a lot of potential over there, oh yeah, definitely. And I'm not saying it changes it and it takes the culture away. It does a little bit, but you know, it, it's for the good as well, I guess. Gentrification has changed the image of Newham. Yeah, so um, it's interesting that you talk about yeah. the old Newham. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I went to college and university outside of the borough, yeah. um, and I would tell people where I'm from, I grew up in Stratford, I'm from Stratford, people yeah. would actually be like, oh, that's a really rough area. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, I've heard that there's a lot of knife crime, there's a lot of gang activity, there's a lot of crime generally. You know? oh, man, I, feel, I relate. Every time I tell somebody I'm from Chicago, oh, are you from 63rd? Well, shut, shut. Shut up! God, stop asking me that. Y'all know it. Chicago is huge. There's so much more. <laughs> Salute, though, but no. You know, the people up there aren't nice. They're all council estate trash, literally. Like, yeah. things people have said to me like 15, 20 years ago. And I was like, oh, okay. They, they'd say things like, you'd never catch me dead in Stratford. I'd never come to Stratford, never come to Newham. Why, it's wasteland, it's this, it's this, it's this. Yeah. In the last 10 years, like five to 10 years, yeah. similar types of people have now been saying, oh, I really like Stratford. <laughs> it's really nice around there. And yeah. I have to ask them, do you mean Westfield? And they're like, yes. Um, and I'm like, no, you need to cross the road outside of Westfield to see what Stratford and Newham and the other areas around here are really like. Because Westfield, as lovely as it, and convenient as it is, it's not a true representation of what Newham is about. So Westfield is just the mall, right? Because we got, we have, or not here, but in Chicago. No, there is, there's a Westfield here, I'm tweaking. But in Chicago, like, that's what they had. The malls were Westfield. Some of them. Yeah, it is mad. It's mad. It, I've, I've had that comparison. People literally from 15 years ago going, wouldn't come to Newham, wouldn't come to Stratford. It's a shithole. Mm. <laughs> to going, oh, I really like Stratford. I'd love to live there. No, you wouldn't, hon. No, you wouldn't. So basically, right now, guys, you're in the high road in Maryland. So basically, if you, if, you, if you drive down this way over here, you're going towards Stratford. Then if you go, yeah, so this way takes you all the way to Stratford. Then if you go all the way down here, it takes you towards Forest Gate, Leighton. So I'm going to show you around the high road and I'm going to show you how gentrification has hit the neighbourhood and basically, yeah man, where I used to cut my hair and pretty much so of, over here, I'm not, I'm not really going to get on camera but just opposite next to the bus stop is a butcher shop, is one, is one down by some Algerian brothers just right next to the bus stop and that's the best butcher meat if you want to get your halal chicken, your halal stuff in, in Maryland Stratford but yeah, we're going to walk and I'm going to show you the high road and the neighbourhood 
So I, as you can see, they've done the road over here and gentrification has hit the neighborhood so deep that we've got a lot of people that moved in here. We don't even know who's who, but you can see that it's still part of the neighborhood. So they've, so they've done the roads, they've redone the train station. The train station was never like that. We used to have barriers. But anyway, we're going to walk and I'm going to show you exactly. That's how they said in Chicago. They said, I was just at a wedding in Dallas and I seen a lot of people that was from Chicago because the people that had the wedding, obviously, they were from Chicago. And they was like, bro, Chicago, where you lived, it ain't even the same no more. It can not even look the same. So many new buildings that went up. I'm, damn, I'm, I only been gone two years. <laughs> I'm, that's how I need to go back, man. I'm trying to go back this month, no cap. But, you mm. know. what I'm talking about. If I do go back, I'm going to try to do like a, like a tour of where I was from, where, I, where I'm from in there. So during COVID, a lot of places have shut down, as you can see over here. So people couldn't afford to pay the rent, the lease. So they've shut down all of these shops. And um, I'm going to be honest with you, poverty is very high over here in Newham. There's a lot of people that still sleep on the streets. It's sad, but um, it's the daily lifestyle of Newham, you know? But yeah, man. So, as you can hear, over here, you see some people, they sleep here, you know? So this is life. This yeah. is life in the neighborhood, they you know? If you see stuff like this, you're gonna think, if you see stuff like this over here, you're gonna think you're like in downtown LA or in certain parts of California, but people actually sleep here, you know? They have breakfast here, they go to bed here. So this is, this is a shame, you know, in a place like Newham. Across the street from a tower like that. So this barber shop over here, I've been getting it since when I was knee high, since when I was young. And I used to cut my hair for a long time. And it's uh, basically owned for one of my brothers called Alex. Um, Yo brother, is Alex there? He's not there, oh, okay. So anyway, when I was young, I used to cut my hair in this barber shop right over here. And everyone that's from Maryland or that's from Stratford, or maybe Forest Gate, they used to come to this barber shop and they used to cut their hair. So yeah, man, big up my man called Alex here. Hair Swagger, yeah. It's a, one of the best barber shops that you get in the neighborhood. But yeah, man, that's pretty much it. So that's Maryland. I've showed you um, where I was brought up. I've showed you the barber shop. You know, I've already showed you um, the street where I've, I've skipped there for numerous amount of times. So I'm going to take you around Stratford, uh, the train station. And I want to show you guys the gentrification that's hit around Stratford, get the new M sign. And we're gonna go to three more other areas around the borough. So yeah, man. Let's go. Yeah. It's a good little insight, man, from a from black man to traveler, man. Appreciate it. Tell a little bit like, comment, subscribe, turn on post.